Hello, how you doing? In this video, I'm going to talk about vector databases. Have you ever wondered how LLMs use vector databases? If so, then watch along with me for the next few minutes and I will quickly get you up to speed. Okay, let's get started. There are three common use cases where vector databases enable LLMs. The first is permanent memory. LLMs on their own are stateless. The LLMs themselves don't keep track of conversation. So to have some continuity in a conversation between a user and an LLM, you need a way to keep this conversational history in memory. One way to do this is to have the user's chat client include the conversational history in each new prompt. Vector databases give you another option in saving conversational history. Vector databases operating on the server side can also serve as a store to keep track of these conversations. The second use case where vector databases help LLMs emerges because of the cutoff problem that all pre-trained LLMs have. LLMs are trained with content up to the cutoff date after which they are released to production. When an LLM answers a user prompt, its response only takes into account content it has been pre-trained on that was provided before the cutoff date. One way you can solve this problem is to insert recent, more timely content into a vector database. Now, when the user prompts an LLM, the system can look for any new semantically relevant documents in the vector database. If it finds any, it can include this new content with the user's prompt and submit it all to the LLM. Now, the LLM's response will be generated using more recent, up-to-date content. The last use case is integrating your organization's proprietary data into an LLM-driven system. This is also known as RAG, or Retrieval Augmented Generation. Let's look at this last use case in more detail. To integrate your organization's proprietary data into an LLM-driven system, you first need to take all your proprietary documents, create embeddings, and then insert these embeddings into a vector database. Quick note, a specialized embedding LLM is used to create these vectors. In this video, we're focused on LLMs, and since LLMs process text and language documents, this video is centered around this. But you can create embeddings for any type of data, such as audio, image, and video, and these embeddings can also be stored in a vector database. Similarity searches can be executed against these types of data as well. And this approach is what drives image, audio, and video searches for Google and others. Back to our use case of integrating proprietary data, after we insert our embeddings into the vector database, we then want to include these embeddings on any user prompts to the LLM. Here, when a user submits a prompt to the LLM, we create a query embedding from that prompt using our specialized embedding LLM. A query embedding is just a vector representation of the text in the user prompt. Next, the system queries the vector database for semantically similar documents. If similar embeddings are returned from the query, they are paired up with the original prompt before being sent to the LLM for a response. This technique enables you to use your proprietary data with an LLM-driven system. Quick note, when we query the vector database using similarity searches, the vector database is not doing keyword matching. Instead, it's looking for semantically similar text. The aim is to understand the meaning and context behind the query, providing more accurate and relevant results. I have a video coming soon where I go into detail on popular similarity search algorithms. Check this out if you're interested. I also have another video on embeddings, and you can check this out to learn more about that topic as well. So a common question that comes up is, why can't you use a relational database to store your vector embeddings? This is a really good question. Relational databases are ideal for transactional workflows and do support a variety of indexing techniques. Additionally, you can store vectors in a relational database and you can execute queries against tables with these vectors. So yes, functionally it would work. But the problem is that 
the relational database does not have native query support for similarity search algorithms, nor does it support indexing strategies optimized for vectors. So what does this mean? Well, because of this limitation in relational databases, if you want to find similar vectors to an input vector, you will need to execute a query that does a full scan across your entire table, retrieving all the vectors, which will then enable you to execute your own vector similarity compares one by one. Using Big O analysis to examine the performance characteristics of this approach, you will recognize this is an order N operation, and you might now start to see the problem. For use cases where you have millions, billions, or even trillions of vectors, this simply will not work. This will not scale. The time it would take for your system to return results to your users would exceed any time frames acceptable, and the inefficiency in compute resources would have significant costs. This is just not a good option. So as a proof of concept or personal home project with low volumes of vector data, yes, you can use a relational database. But for scalable production systems, relational databases are just not a good choice. So what features does the vector database have that make it ideal for ML and LLM driven systems? The first is native support for similarity search. Common algorithms supported are cosine similarity, Euclidean distance, and dot product. These are also known as distance metrics when configuring your vector database. Typically, when you create your table, you define your distance metric you want to use for all your queries. The second feature is vector-optimized indexing. When defining your vector table, in addition to defining your distance metric, you can typically define your indexing strategy. Different vector databases support some and not others but here are some of the more common indexing techniques. The first indexing technique is inverted file index, or IVF. This uses k-means clustering to create centroids, and each vector is assigned to the nearest centroid. During a query, only vectors within the closest centroids are considered. The second indexing technique is product quantization. This indexing strategy splits the vector space into several subspaces and quantizes each subspace independently. This reduces memory usage and speeds up distance computation. The third indexing technique is hierarchical, navigatable small world. This approach constructs multiple layers of graphs where each layer is a navigatable small world network. Queries navigate through these layers to find the nearest neighbor. So what makes vector databases scalable? Vector databases are distributed by design and employed as nodes, so adding more nodes enables you to horizontally scale. Vector databases also support vector-optimized compression techniques, which optimizes storage. As you would expect, vector databases can handle n simultaneous queries. And finally, in-memory caching for frequently read vectors is a very common feature supported. This is not an exhaustive list, but here are some of the more popular vector databases available today. If you decide to use a vector database, please know there are more options out there and the list is growing all the time. Pinecone, Milvus, Chroma, and Wevelet are all well-funded startups that provide specialized vector database offerings. FACE is a Facebook similarity search open source system, which is getting good adoption. Legacy data store providers Redis, Elasticsearch, and PostgreSQL have all added extensions to their respective databases to support vectors. As this space evolves over the next few years, we'll get a better feel for which of these systems becomes more popular and which wane. All right, you should now have a good conceptual understanding of three common use cases where LLMs use vector databases and why architecturally a purpose-driven vector database is a good choice for ML and LLM systems. Okay, thanks for watching. This video, along with all my other videos in the ML AI Knowledge Concepts playlist are listed in the YouTube description. I invite you to watch other videos on my channel. If you like the way I'm sharing this content, please consider subscribing. When you subscribe, this really helps my channel grow. One last thing, we all love technology, 
and we're all excited about the innovation with the cloud, machine learning, and AI. But don't forget to carve out some time to live in the real world. Go outside, go swimming, go hiking, go climbing, go surfing. Get out and move your body. And if you do, tell me in the comments. I want to hear about it. And with that, have a great day. Thanks.